All right, welcome everybody to First Contact Radio. Today I'm here with guest Mark Sargent. We are going to talk about Flat Earth. How you doing, Mark? Welcome back to First Contact Radio. I'm, and thank you very much for having me, and I'm doing great. You know, it's been a little over a year since last time we spoke, and in the course of this year, it's been pretty amazing on what has taken place within this community. I, I mean, when you and I first talked, I think there was three people that were doing the videos. Yeah. There was Eric, there was uh, Matt, and you. Yeah. And that was it. And now there's, you know, you can't stop finding them. No. And, and there's... Every every day there's new people joining this thing. Mm -hmm. In fact, we've, we've been kind of shying away now from saying that it's a flatter movement, more of a flatter awakening. Right. And every single day, I'm not kidding you, uh, I have to set the filter to, to daily now. It, I joked about it, you know, mm -hmm. a year ago. It said, you know, I used, you know, set the filter like one month, then it was one week, now it's one day. Right. You know, I, I type it in flat earth and I literally set the filter to the last 24 hours. And then I also have to go to mainstream news and type in flat earth and make sure that I haven't missed anything. Now, granted, a lot of the people that, that listen to my stuff and other people's stuff, they'll send me what's going on in the mainstream news. But, mm -hmm. and, and we'll get to it, I'm sure. But there's been a lot, a lot of stuff that has happened in the last 12 months. It sure has. It's, it's been nutty. Mm -hmm. It's been nutty. It has, and, and what I find is that the amount of research that is being done is just getting better and better, yeah. and yeah. and that's what's really awesome about it. Yeah, it started out with, because uh, I didn't really do any experiments, you know, I just put the question out there, you know, and, and uh, Jaron from Jaronism right. started doing experiments with laser tests, uh, Jeffrey Grupp from com, he started doing tests, uh, Paul Michael Bale started doing tests, uh, is Sandy, is Sandy, I can go on and on. But everyone's been trying to find, because uh, it's kind of a gold rush right now, mm -hmm. it's trying to figure out how this thing is going to, when it really becomes popular, how it's going to make money. And not that money should be the driving force, but let's face it, you know, that's, that's how these things work. A lot of mm -hmm. things become popular because, and once they get to a certain popularity, uh, the people with the money start coming in. Uh, right. People talking to me after the interview I did with you last year, which is why uh, part of the reason I moved out of Colorado uh, from reality television shows, hmm. and, and they were saying, "Oh yeah, we're, we, we we're, they were anticipating that this may turn into a big thing," and this was last summer. And I was going, really, you think so? And they're going, "Yeah, yeah, this could this could actually happen." And they were screen testing people. Hmm. I'm not going to name who's who's who, but they were screen testing basically everybody that was that was doing stuff in the flat Earth community that was higher higher profile, and. So, and, and the experiments kind of came from there, where people were just like, okay, what can we do to get people's attention? Mm -hmm. So, uh, the, you know, the laser tests, the moonlight tests, and um, the water temperature test, you know, the curvature test, that was the big one. That's what, what everybody's been jumping on. Whether or not you use, the, the easiest one is going to be uh, the, the pulling the boats back mm -hmm. when, when you can't see them anymore. So, a boat leaves the horizon and then you use whatever it is, that cool Pix 900. I never bought one of them, but I've, I've seen you know, what they can do. Right. You've got that amazing zoom, and it's like, oh, yeah, by the way, you can bring the boat back. And then if you, know, if you only use part of the zoom, then it goes away again. You can use the zoom again, mm -hmm. you can pull it back again, and that can't be possible. And that's, that's, right. that's such, a, such a blessing. So. Right. You know, um, that, that interview that you had with uh, Patricia, she was – Pretty on. I mean, she was grilling you pretty hard. Oh yes, yes, yes. Yeah. The uh, about the mixer. About the mixer and about well, she was grilling you really hard about you know uh, what was the what was you have it up at your site is is Mark is he a shill? That was the title of the interview. Yeah. And she went at it and she asked you all the hard questions that you know and I understand and I'm sure you understand that it's a new area. People are skeptical and you got all kind of personalities that are working something out sometimes you know you got to work through all of those personalities get past the messengers to get to the message yeah. you know so are, are things smoothing out in that area uh somewhat yeah it's, it's never been easy what we've been doing so far mm -hmm. uh, it has been really really uh uh 
volatile in the community as, at large, mostly because conspiracy people are so twitchy as it is, uh, to where I made a video called, I called it the, uh, uh, the Flat Earth Monty Python Life of Brian comparison, mm -hmm. which I thought was very, very true, which was, if you, if you remember Monty <laughs> Python Life of Brian, he was, you know, uh, uh, told, you know, mis misunderstood that he was, he was the Christ, and he was running, you know, from all his fans, you know, through the streets, and he drops a shoe. Right. And, he, and he figures, well, they're going to catch me if I go back and get the shoes. I'm just going to keep running. And they all stop around the shoe, and they all question the meaning of the shoe. And what does it mean? What's the symbolism of it? They know all of a sudden you could see, and it was very deliberate, of course. They, 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 it was like you, you saw like four different religions like, in, like become uh, uh, coalesce right then and there. It was like, no, you know, we should – we should all hold our shoes up, you know, right. and put them on pencils. No, no, we should collect shoes, you know, and it's like, no, 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 we should, we should wear one shoe in honor of him. And it's like, they all were, you know, all it was, was of course he had just dropped his shoe. That's kind of what's been happening or, you know, it's been continually happen, happening with the Flat Earth Movement mm -hmm. Awakening, which is people want you know they say it's so it's such it's still in flux you know everyone you know is there a dome is there not dome it does it is it an infinite plane is it not is it multiple dimensions you know what shape is the dome it goes on and on and we've all been everyone wants to have their own model and some people really really dig in their their feet i'm, I'm not going to poke too much fun at eric here but that's how eric and i you know became opposing factions is because, you know, his people contacted me and said, oh, yeah, by the way, um, Eric didn't like the way you were referencing Crow 777 in the Lunar Wave. Mm -hmm. He also doesn't like, uh, what was the other thing? He said, oh, yeah, and he wants you to make sure it's an absolutely perfectly flat model. And you're not supposed to, you know, your talking point should be limited to this, this, this. What's going on? What are you talking about? It's like, okay, not to be mean or anything, but it's like, look, I don't need permission. His videos were out two months before mine. It's like, yeah, fine, he wrote the Atlantean Conspiracy last year, but he got a lot of those ideas from Paul Michael Bales, who came out and talked about this. So imagine that happening everywhere. Right. Uh, you know, even, even in, now Patricia and I, our disagreement was about something different. That was about the, uh, the mixer and that, you know, because the mixers it initially was her idea. It was supposed to be the Houston mixer. That was how it was going to happen. Mm -hmm. In fact, she, if I'm not mistaken, um, uh, she's part of the, uh, the London mixer mm -hmm. happening right now. Uh, <clears throat> my mixer just came kind of as a side note because somebody contacted me and said, oh, Mark, you should do something up in Seattle since you're up there. It's like, all right. I honestly didn't want to do it. I was like, oh, really, can't somebody else do it? But then I said, okay, I'm just going to go do it. And when I did it, you know, it, it turned into a really fun evening with mm -hmm. the party. And, and yeah, it wasn't too racy, but it was a lot of stuff implied. And uh, the Christian community really latched on to that and said that you should you should take a more of a, a role model example. And, and you know, Patricia didn't want my escapades spilling over onto her stuff. Right. So she's all about integrity and image, and I get that. Uh, but so yeah, so having you know getting grilled for the three hours yeah was my my best uh, you know the best time I probably could have spent, but and had to be done. Got to pay the piper in some cases. Right. You know, over this last year, I've since we spoke last, I've been on a nonstop study. I mean, it's nonstop, and I've watched as much as I can watch. I keep finding stuff. I think that we need to look literally outside the box to figure out what's going on here. And and so, you know, kind of as I listened to the questions Patricia was asking you, I wrote down a number of them and, and I have what I found and what I think might be answers to some of these questions, which is what I want to discuss with you, all these various things. For me, the whole premise is this, the way I have, the premise that I'm following and what I'm looking at, and this is based on a year of research since we spoke last, that if I was coming to this earth and I was completely unaware of what was going on this earth and I arrived, I would want to know what are the manuals of how to use earth? What are the, the manuals that I would get? And if I was to come here and, and the operating manual for earth There'd be a couple of them. One of them certainly would be the Bible. Sure. And so that my premise is that the Bible is one of the operating manuals of what's going on, at least a script that's being played out 
along with a couple others. So I'm going to look at that book to see if I can see some proofs in what it is that I'm trying to understand here. Okay. And along the way, there are certainly a number of proofs in there that the Bible is a flat earth book. You know, once I started seeing that that, that was the case, then it got to be no longer is the earth flat, but what does that mean? What does that mean to us? Because who cares if it's flat, if it's round, if it doesn't have any meaning or purpose, it's just another bit of information. And sure. as I started looking at like Rob Skiba's work, um, that started making sense because the Book of Enoch is another one of those books I've always thought was very significant to a story that's unfolding. And as I started putting these together, I discovered the Nag Hammadi Library. Okay. And the Nag Hammadi Library, are you familiar with that? No. I, the Nag Hammadi Library was discovered in 1945, and they are a series of texts. There's 52, there were 13 leather-bound volumes that were found in a jar, in a cave in Nag Hammadi, Egypt in 1945. Okay. And in there, there's words and texts written by the various disciples and the apostles. There's, uh, Mary Magdalene has something there. There's uh, John has something. Thomas, uh, Judas, on and on. There's all kind of texts that are there. So I'm starting to read through these, and what I start finding is there's a story in the Apocryphon of John that he is telling where Yeshua returns to him after the resurrection and tells him this wonderful story of the creation and how everything comes together. And, and in this story, he talks basically about these immortal realms where you have the mother, father, God, and upon their interaction together, there is a spark created, the Christ consciousness or the autogen, divine autogens. And this then went out, created four other realms, and each of these realms had beings in them. There were four realms, and each of these realms had three sub-realms. So you have all these multiple realms and kingdoms of sorts, and in one of them, there was a being named Yaldabaoth who came into existence. And Yaldabaoth came into existence in an unnatural way through his mother Sophia, which means wisdom. And this Yaldabaoth was then cast out of the immortal realms and ended up on earth. And while on earth, Yaldabaoth discovered that he wasn't the be-all, end-all God because one day God appeared and looked down from the heavens and the water, in the water around um, Yaldabaoth, he saw the reflection of God and decided he wanted to trap that so God would be subservient to him. So he created the skin suit, the human body, all in an effort to trap God. Now, as we go through the story of Yaldabaoth, it's very similar to the story of Yahweh. And so I started looking at this and thinking, that's kind of bizarre because we're taught that Yahweh is the God. And according to Yeshua, Jesus Christ, that's not the case, that this was a fallen one that came down, and everything that we know is a deception from the beginning because we've been deceived to believe that this Yahweh is not actually who we've been told he is. The point of all of this is, in one of the descriptions of the, in the uh, Nag Hammadi, and let me find the actual quote here, Okay, here we go. In the Nag Hammadi Library, in the Apocryphon of John, at one point when he's talking about the creation and this Yaldabaoth creating, because Yaldabaoth, when he was cast out of the immortal realms, he only had the power to be able to manifest and work with what was already there. He wasn't the creator. And so he could replicate what he saw. And so as he was bringing into existence various different beings that were helpers for him in creating and creating and replicating these other realms, he, at one point it says, and he placed seven kings, this was in the realms that he was creating, that he was filling, he placed seven kings, each corresponding to the firmaments of heaven over the seven heavens and over the depths of the abyss. And I read that and I thought, what does that mean, each corresponding to the firmaments of heaven? And I started thinking, well, and we're told that in our Bible that on the second or on the uh, second day God created the firmament. And I thought, well, we think of the firmament as a dome. So when the immortal realms are talking about the firmaments of heaven, are they talking about dome cities? Are these dome cities that are out there, the immortal realms? And 
Yaldabaoth or the story of this being was kicked out because we have it in a variety of ways. Michael kicks out uh, Satan, throws him down to earth. We have the story in the Sumerian tablets of, of a Lulu who first came down escaping a problem that was there and then he was later followed by Enlil and Enki and Anu. So we have this same story of these beings coming from this other realm which is a realm that all have firmaments. So I started realizing and looking at the idea that if there's this immortal realm with these firmaments and Yaldabaoth manif created an artificial reality based on that and the human being was created in order to trap God, then basically what we have is a being that is trapped in a terrarium controlled by a entity who is pretending to be God and we're here stuck not knowing what reality we're in because we're just trying to figure out where we live. We're told we live on a ball when we actually live on a flat plane. Sure. And so everything's out of whack and our way of getting out is kind of unseen to us and I believe that the mission of Jesus Christ when he came was to show us how to get out of the terrarium that this body is not a body that God can be trapped in, but that we can rise above that. And I believe that was truly the mission and how we, the whole idea of being saved, because it's never been about original sin of something we've done. The original sin occurred when the being was cast out of the, the immortal realms. So that to me has been what I've been talking about in my show um, probably the last couple months. And... It just, to me, it makes, it makes a whole lot of sense that we're a replication of another reality. Interesting. And to me, it's this immortal realm with dome cities. Yeah, yeah, I could see that. Uh, I've, I've, several people have mentioned variations of that, and why not, right? Uh, mm -hmm. You know, it would explain a lot of things. One, it would explain, uh, you know, because some people said, well, you know, isn't there Mars and Jupiter and Venus? It's like, well... Probably not the way you think of, you know, there may be other realms because I, I think I've mentioned to you before that I've seen, you know, with night vision, there's stuff flying up there right. all the time and it's not us and they seem to be real casual about it. It's like they're living right on top of us or they're, they're, they're going from one place to another and they're traveling over the top of us. Right. To get wherever they're going and so I have no doubt there's, there's other civilizations now, whether they're a combination of previous civilizations of us because mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's really apparent that we are not version 1.0 right you know we're probably version like six or seven or whatever you want to call it uh but there's you know there's probably some survivors from previous civilizations from 1.0 and 2.0 and 3.0 and then there's probably other dome cities out there mm -hmm. that are yeah the same why because i've always said you know it's not going to be a one-off right you know if you're going to build one of these you're going to build a whole bunch of these why wouldn't you you know, you know, why not have a ten or a hundred or or more? You know, depending on you know what what advanced race or divine being we're talking about here. Uh, yeah. And if you and if you go through the Nag Hammadi library, there's a number of the books that s replicate that same idea that multiple firmaments and that what was created here was a copy of what was known to already exist. Sure. You know but why? Why not? Yeah. And then one of the questions that was brought up is is that why when we look up at all the other planets we see them round then we must be round but i found an answer to that 1 corinthians verse 5 uh, chapter 15 verse 40 it says that there are also celestial bodies and there are also terrestrial bodies and the glory of the celestial ones is the glory of the celestial ones and the glory of the terrestrial one is another so it makes a very clear statement that just that those up there don't have to be the same as what we're on, that they're, those are different. Oh, yeah. And wasn't there another chapter and verse that they were, they were put in the, the stars and the plants were put in the sky for uh, signs and wonders right. as part of, part of the giant clock system? Right. Uh, two, two points there. One, because people have said, aren't you killing astrology with flat earth? I go, no, not at all. It just means that the clock is way more intimate and mm -hmm. way, way closer. It's not millions of light years away, which are ridiculous distances. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's right there. Um, second was, you know, if people, I, and I know as scientists, you know, especially love jumping on this one, where they say, well, it's obvious that Mars and Jupiter and Venus are all spheres, therefore we must be a sphere. And I go, fine. And you may have heard me say this, where 
it, you know, you take a pair of binoculars, take it to your local uh, planetarium, and look up at Jupiter and tell me with your binoculars in a cytoplanetarium, does Jupiter look more or less real and more or less spherical? And it's a rhetorical question. It doesn't make any difference because you know you're in a planetarium and mm -hmm. that's not real. Right. And so they go, they go, what's your point? I go, my point is if you walk out of that planetarium, who's to say you're not in a bigger planetarium? Right. And then they come back and they say, well, you know, science, you know, NASA. And I was like, see, you all, all roads lead back to the same place, which is the gatekeepers that we know as the American government. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It's, it's, um, it's a fascinating study. And, and, you know, I think it's very significant simply because the book, the Bible is the book that we're told is the be all end all. And yeah. if that being in that book that is involved with the creation of things is not the God that we believe, but is actually the fallen one, mm -hmm. then the deception is, well, that's a big deception. And we're, no wonder we're having some challenges. Now, are there mixed up versions in there? I'm, I'm guessing there are because the stories in the Bible in Yahweh only go back 6,000 years where the stories of the Sumerian tablets, according to Zechariah Stitchin, they go back 400,000 years of this Anunnaki story. So there's something that occurred more. It seems that the stories in the Bible are versions of other stories. So maybe Yahweh is a combination of both and Lil and Enki, representing the good and the bad, because I think that there's a lot of mix-up in that when we look at the Bible of which one is the real God, which one is it? Because Jesus always refers to God. He never calls him Yahweh. He only calls him the Father. And in the Nag Hammadi Library, he only refers to him as the Father or the Mother or the All-Parent. And so I think it's very significant that he's not calling the same name as the Old Testament. There's a very different being that's there something changed. And even in the Nag Hammadi Library, it talks in a ch of a changing that occurred between Yaldabaoth and then one of Yaldabaoth's sons because Yaldabaoth was just too out of whack. He yeah. thought he was God and eventually he was removed from power by those higher up than him, up in the, in the immortal realms. They had enough of that. Yeah. You know, and whatever's going on here has always been, as it says, under the watchful eye of spirit. So whatever is happening has its purpose and I don't doubt that the creators of this reality the creators of humankind didn't have their skills because they obviously did it's just what is the nature of us here and if the nature early on according to some of the stories is that we were a slave race then that kind of ties into a lot of things of where our area that we're enslaved is maybe in a big big terrarium I like the model that Rob Skiba does. I think that makes a lot of sense because it fits right in with the Book of Enoch, which is one of these manuals that we should be looking at. I think the Book of Enoch, the Bible, especially the Book of Revelation, I think that outlines some stuff. And it's like, like we talked about before, all the world's a stage. And we're playing something out here, a story, and the story is written down somewhere. And I think those are our scripts. And if we... Yeah. Yeah, I absolutely agree. Uh, Rob Skiba, it's, it's funny you mentioned that because I still use his slides on the five, you know, that he did like a five-stage thing mm -hmm. you know, how it was built, which was, you know, a dome basically inside a giant box, which would make sense anyway because if you're going to build, you know, some sort of device like that, you know, you're, it's still going to be better if you start off with a square. You know, uh, machinery, you know, our, all our buildings, you know, you start off the square. See, it's, it's way more efficient to, to do it that way. Now, what you have inside it, that's a whole other thing. But I love the whole concept where there was water, literally water above this. Mm -hmm. you know, water, you know, a firm that separates the waters above and the waters below. Because that would be the ultimate failsafe, mm -hmm. which is even if they figured out a way to get through it, even if they, it, it's, uh, it's, it's a doomsday scenario. You know, which of course you know, we we didn't know, or maybe we did. We started trying to punch holes with it, you know, in, with atomic weapons back in the 1950s. Uh, but yeah, yeah, I love Rob Skiba's version. You know, I've uh, yeah, there's a number of guys out there that I've been watching their videos. There's Shazwar Bukti. I hope I pronounced that right. There's a a, a plain truth. Have you seen any of his videos? Yeah, I've seen some his stuff. He's good. A uh, guy named a uh, YouTube user named Peter Pan. There's another one, uh, Wakey Wakey. Of course, yeah. And then uh, Flat 
water, flat earth, and then air in Dover. Yep. I mean, it just, and the body of work that they're putting out there is pretty awesome. Uh, oh, yeah, not to mention Odd TV and, uh, and Andy Leeds. Mm -hmm. oh, sorry, Marty Leeds. Uh, yeah, there's some great stuff. Great stuff. Are we, are we yes. still recording? Good. The, um, oh, yeah, there's a bunch of people. Uh, in fact, the, um, the, the top 20 or 25 videos com now versus what it was you know, a year ago is amazing. Uh, mm -hmm. The amount of content, the amount of hits. Right. You know, um, a couple of mine, and it wasn't, they're not even on my channel, you know, broke a million hits a while ago. And uh, Eric Dubay's thing's got one that's in, it's over a million hits, and um, I think Odd TV is going to hit his pretty soon. And it's amazing. It is, and the work that people are doing is is extremely fascinating. Yeah. Extreme, extremely fascinating what they're finding out, and after a while, it's just to the point of, you know, another piece of proof that you already see and know. Just kind of confirming, and that's that's for me. It's it's kind of already past the point of the Earth is the flat. It's now like what's next. You know, what's the next thing? Because how long can you keep running around saying, Earth is flat? Okay, so what? That's that's why I started going down, you know, the testimonials where, uh, was seven, eight months ago now, where people started coming to me. Because remember, I was asking for whistleblowers mm -hmm. at the end of the, one of the clues, and people started coming forward from the United States military. And once that first guy from the Navy came out and said, look, all the instruments that I use, the high tech, mm -hmm. show me that it's flat. Uh, then, you know, we go Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, uh, different engineers, uh, different corporate people, anyone that had to do with travel or map making, you know, surveyors, two different surveyors came out. I think I've got 17 people on my list hmm. now that, that have either had me read statements because they wanted to remain anonymous because they, you know, didn't want to lose their jobs, uh, or they came on air and just said, you know what, screw it, I'm going to talk about it. And right. I've just been compiling. And not only so for me, it's it's really been validated because not only have none of these people recanted, mm -hmm. you know, none of these people came back. You know, it's like you know what, I retract the whole thing. None of those, none of, none of that has happened. But nobody has come out against them. Uh, none of their peers. So you would think, you know, someone would come out, uh, you know, from from the army or the navy. You know, one of the the major branches, of the United States military, and say, you know what, that air force guy you had on there was a piece of crap, and here's why. You'd think somebody would come out against it because what do those guys have to lose? Right. I mean, out against the flat earth, that's easy. Should be easy enough. Like, why didn't a scientist come out against day one? Um, now, to be fair, um, you know, I did two plane surveyors. There's two types of, of surveyors that are out there. There's planar and then there's geodetic. Mm -hmm. And a geodetic surveyor made his own video. He didn't contact me directly. He just made his own video and says, yeah, here's why I think it's round. But you got to remember, a geodetic surveyor might as well be an astronomer. He absolutely, he goes, he starts his day with every calculation saying being adapted towards a curved surface. Uh, so he has to, if he doesn't believe in a ball, then he doesn't, he, you know, he's, his career is over. So his, his view was a bit skewed, and plus he had no arguments. I mean, there was this one part, I was listening to his video, and, and, and yeah, he had a couple good points right up to where he was talking about the Statue of Liberty, mm -hmm. from what, that you could see it from 60 miles away, and he's going, he's going you know, that eight inches per mile square thing. Yeah, fine, I, I get it. It's eight inches per mile square. He goes, but you guys are doing it wrong. And then he goes, he goes, so, he goes, so you see the Statue of Liberty from 60 miles away. Mm -hmm. He pauses, he goes, so what? So what? You can see us going, what do you mean, so what? You right. Can't answer for it. Uh, it's like, so what? You shouldn't be able to see it. But he didn't, you know, he, he was in such denial. There was nothing, nothing you could do for him. Right. And again, once he believed it, if he ever believed it, he had to quit his job. So, same thing with Astron. You know, there's been a number of publications that are recently found and that are out there. There's the NASA reference publication 1207. You've heard of that one? Uh, not by number, but what is it? Uh, in the concluding remarks, it says this report derives and defines us that. Yep, yep. Yeah, I, I knew, I know that one. Some uh, flat and stationary Earth. Yep, flat. Then there's the uh, propagation of electromagnetic fields over a flat Earth, the PDF that came out, in which it says, it, and then uh, what we have, the Department of Defense World Geodetic System. Yep. You were just talking about that, where they said it's an Earth-centered. Earth fixed terrestrial reference system. So it seems that the military's, you know, even even using a system that they're not really referring to, you know, that is all earth centered. Yeah. 
Yeah, and it, on top of that, we're getting it's getting even weirder now. I mean, I don't know if you want to talk about. I mean, most people have heard about it by now. You know, the Bob uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson rap battle right. early in the year. But Neil deGrasse Tyson, you know, after all that, he comes on uh, during a physics panel, I think three or four weeks ago, and says that there's a probability that we're now living in a simulated reality. A simulated universe, and and none of the physicists were on board with this. You know, he he was absolutely on his own. And then uh, two weeks after that, or not even two weeks, but maybe a week after that, Elon Musk comes out, says the same thing, mm-hmm. parrots everything Elon yeah. Tyson says. And then I, I was like, okay, you know, I think we're done with that. And no, uh, I'll be Alex Jones show. You know, Infowars, they they covered it, right? And they ran their own thing. I was like, why? why why now? You know, before it's like, okay, so the flat earth, that's nuts. But a simulated reality, that's perfectly legit. Right. You're con- even though you're contradicting yourself, because if it is simulated, then chances are it's going to be built like we build a simulation, which is flat. Mm-hmm. Three, almost, almost, I would say 99% of the games that we build on large scale, giant MMOs, you know, virtual realities, where you're walking around, you're walking around a perfectly flat world. Mm-hmm. And the reason is, uh, more than anything else, is it's easier to write. You don't have to deal with the curve. Right. So you, you just build in a flat world. No one's going to know the difference. You know, kind of like the pilots when they were telling me, uh, you know, every pilot goes up there and they're up at altitude. They say, yeah, we look around and the horizon looks perfectly flat all the way around, but it's not really flat, right? Right. It can't be, it can't be really flat. It's but so but they got this weird paradox that's going on in their heads. Yeah, it looks absolutely flat, but it's not flat because we're told it's not flat. It's like. What do you mean? You told it's not flat. You know, right. It's, it's it's great psychological conditioning. Anyway, that's uh, I so I'm really surprised that that's what it's kind of turning to now, where it's almost like they're 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 trying to veer it off into a different direction. Right. <laughs> and bless you. And that could well be. You know, I mean, if one is to simply take the biblical order of creation and just look at that, that kind of explains. You know, for the, the conclusion of this interview please go to MarkSargent.com.